segregation still lives with us in our education lives, still after the Reconstruction era, and only you can put an end to this. After the Civil War, the Union embarked on a journey known as Reconstruction. From 1865 to 1877, the country struggled with efforts to readmit the southern states into the Union. Reconstruction failed to alter the South's social structure or distribution of wealth and power, which had disadvantages on African Americans. It also left many significant importances, such as the Freedmen's Bureau, the Board v. Brown case, and free equal education, which we still need today. A major problem which was fought over was the differences between white and black education. People of white skin had more and better opportunities compared to those of color. Most schools were segregated and not equal. Oliver Otis Howard, a veteran of the Civil War Congress, became the commissioner of the Freedmen's Bureau. It was an experiment in government social policy. Bureau agents were supposed to establish schools, provide aid to the poor and aged, settle problems between white and blacks and among the freed people, and secure the former slaves and white unionists equal treatment before their courts. But most Southern whites hated it. It set aside half a million dollars for education. Education was essential to the African American understanding of freedom. Nearly 3,000 schools and several colleges were established for blacks. The Bureau's school taught an estimate of 200,000 African Americans to read. For both races, Reconstruction laid the foundation for public schooling in the South. The schools in the South were built by the Rosenwald Foundation. Reconstruction moved the creation of the nation's first black college, including Howard University in Washington, D.C., Fisk University in Tennessee, and Hampton Institute in Virginia. But white schools received more funding. An example of segregation was the Brown v. Board case. A black third grader named Linda Brown had to walk one mile to get to her black elementary school, even though white elementary school was only a few blocks away. Her father tried to enroll her in the white elementary school, but the principal of the school refused. Segregated schools sent the message to black children that they were inferior to whites. Therefore, schools were unequal. The court decided that state laws requiring separate but equal schools violated the Equal Protection Clause of the 14th Amendment. Now, research shows that compared to white students, black students are more likely to be suspended or expelled less likely to be placed in gifted programs and subject to lower expectations from their teachers. In 2014, the high school graduation rate for white students was 87%, according to the National Center for Education Statistics. For black students, the rate was 73%. Test scores show a similar racial gap. A survey found that black Americans with some college experience are more likely to say that they have experienced discrimination compared to blacks who did not report having any college experience. In 2014, Tau Kappa Epsilon, a fraternity at Arizona State University, was suspended for having a racist Martin Luther King Jr. party at which they drank from watermelon cups, held their crotches, wore bananas, and formed gang signs with their hands. Work still needs to be done today to create the education that we all want. To conclude, segregation still consists in our lives, even in education.